Hey everyone, in the series of microservices architecture, this video is about design principles of microservices, right? So we are going to analyze in deep what are the principles that we have to follow while designing our microservices, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So first, let's consider a question that why? Why design principles? Is it mandatory to go through these? And if I am avoiding, what are the problems and what are the obstacles that I can face in microservices architecture application, right? So suppose you planted a tree in your garden, right? So and the moment you planted it, you have to care for it, right? So you have to uh, uh, give proper water to it every morning, evening, and you have to care it for like any insects are there or not. So you have to use the proper pesticides and by the time it is growing you have to also take care of the how it is growing if you want the plant to be big like in the upward direction you have to like clip the branches which are unwanted right so that it can direction is always upward right so if you have cared it properly you can get the fruits properly and your tree is grown your plant is grown uh, like full flesh tree now and you are uh, getting the fruits out of it when it was plant like small plant and it by the uh, by the time passes it is now a full grown tree right so you have to care for it like how you have to water it properly you have to use pesticide right and you have to cut the uh, unwanted branches as well so the processes that you are doing with uh, that you did with your plant how did you learn that so, so from where did you know that you have to do all these things? Obviously, you learned it from your around, like uh, like uh, someone told you to do it other uh, or you saw it someone doing it. That is why you did it, right? Same is applicable for softwares, any application that we have. So there were some people when they first used it, they faced some problems and they solved it in some way, right? And then they uh, they thought of documenting those things, right? So that the future generation and some other peoples when they are using, they are not facing the same problems again and again, right? That is why there are principles about software design, any anything, not in software uh, architecture or monolithic microservice architecture, anything in life, they have principles, right? So that you avoid um, doing the mistakes again and again so you can make it more better right so you will face the problems you will face the difficulties but that will be different from the like first people when uh, first people when uh, whatever they faced right i hope it's clear that why it is important to understand the design principles before architecting the application in this architecture right now let's go ahead and see the microservices design principles right so what are the design principles now? So I'm going to explain that in these uh, eight heads. These are the eight points. You can read it one by one. Now let me go ahead and explore this one by one, right? So first coming to independent, that is autonomous. What it is saying? So this is the like sample diagram that I'm giving here. So product, order and account management. If you have watched the first video, you know how is this architecture looks, a complete architecture, right? So I have picked some uh, modules, some services out of that. So this is the product management service. This is order management service and account management service. And there are uh, individual databases for individual databases for each service, right? So let's see what are the properties of the independent autonomous. First, the team is small for each service, right? Second is uh, if you have multiple services. Uh, and you can design it and you can decide what are the requests and responses of the each service like uh, you have specific requests and specific response for the product management at the same time you decide what is the request and response format of the order management and same is for account management we can start the parallel development for each service because they are independent in their functionality and whatever internal implementation of the product management is not going to affect the order management internal implementation right so parallel deployment is going to happen in independent and autonomous structure clear contracts i just explained requests and response have to be cleared uh, when they are being designed right Individually deployable. So when you are deploying this product management service, it doesn't matter that order management is deployed or not. So if you have load on the product management, how many instances you want to deploy, it is not affected by the order management. Coming to the next one, that is resiliency. It is about fault tolerance. It is about design 
for failure. So when you have distributed system, when you have multiple microservices, failures will come obviously, right? So it it is the point that how you are taking those failures. And if the failure is coming on the product management system, what you want that order management to fail, account management to fail. So the point is you have to handle those errors, failures gracefully. How you can handle those errors and failures gracefully when you are aware that when you expect that this failure is about to come how you can know that so first time you will not know but when you analyze those failures by the time you uh, keep the record of those failures that they are uh, they are expected to come they can come in future so that is why the point is designed for failure here the right so this is the fault tolerant means Error come when error come at individual service, it should not affect others, right? So this is the point. So avoid single point of failure. Next point is avoid cascading failure My, means uh, failure at one point should not affect others, right? So the graceful handling should be there, right? So it's not that exception has come and it should uh, like uh, trouble all around that account management call is calling order management, order management is calling product management. And if there is a, any exception at product management, that exception uh, like should not pass to account management. There should be a default masses, like a default response for that so that each service can understand that what to do at that point. Right. So this is about resolution fault tolerance. And last point is consider failure as events and analyze it properly so that you can handle that uh, in future when they are coming. So coming to the next point now. Earlier it was a monolithic architecture and everything you had at like one instance at one machine and it was easy to monitor and it was easy to check the health status and all those stuffs uh, for like for that application. Now you have separated each module as a service, right? And now you have to keep track of each services, like you have to monitor each services, you have to keep record of the loggers of each services and you have to keep record of the health of each services so that you can monitor each and everything because failure at one point is going to affect entire application, right? And you have to handle that properly. How is that possible? When you have centralized monitoring, you have centralized logging and you have proper health check system, right? So, so that order management system can know that when product managing, uh, management is available or not. Coming to the next one that is discoverable. These are the three services that I have shown you, but in real time, you may, may be having like n number of services, right? So each service should have information about the other service, how, how to call that, right? What is the name that they have? So all those things are going to take care under discoverable part. So each service should be registered at some centered center place, right? So it, it is registered there, it is registered there and it is also registered there. So when product management is there to call the order management, so it is not directly going to order management, but it is calling this, this uh, extra service, which is giving the information how to call this order management, right? So this is the point about the discoverable. So all services should be registered at one place and it makes clients life easy. Like right? now product management doesn't have to like uh, uh, look for the address of the order management individually. Now if they can go to this, this service, just give, give the name order management and they will give the each information. Where is that placed? Where is that located? We have domain driven. Each service should be focused on a specific business. It should focus on the core domain. And along with the core domain, it should also focus on the domain logic. So these are the interdependent things like saying the same thing. So each service should take care of only one thing at a time. They should be analogous to the domain or business that you have so that not the development or technical team, but the business person or DevOps team that is there can relate the things properly and how to scale it, scale up or scale down. They can relate that properly. It is possible only when your each service is focused on the business, right? So, so that everyone can understand what your service is doing. Coming to the next point, we have decentralization, right? So now earlier you had a single database, right? So where all the tables and all those stuffs work there. But in microservices architecture, you have different databases, right? So probably each database for each service, right? So each service is corresponding to a database, right? So that database decentralization is necessary here, right? 
you should not share a database right so product management and order management should not share the database when they are separate it is easy to manage right so choice of database depends on the nature of the particular service when they are separate for each service i can choose what database i need so if there are many documents and i need to have a centra database for individual uh, account management service account management service i can have that for order management i need sql database i can have so for product i can have oracle database and for other services i won't see uh, my sql i can have right so there is no restriction in choosing the database right so when you have a uh, single database for each service so this is the benefit of the decentralization coming to the next one high cohesion right so how is this relevant so each service uh, must do one thing only if you want to do the product inquiry so everyone should come to the product management right so this is the point of the cohesion right so product management functionality should not be in order management they should follow the srp means single responsibility principle that is what high cohesion says a business function should be taken care in the in each in each service the same thing a business domain uh, should be taken care in each service and your service uh, and your application should be designed in such a way that it should be easy to take a new similar feature like in product management if there are features of adding deleting and updating the features and if i want to add new features which is deleting all the products or updating all the products like set of products that i'm sending so that should be easy to integrate in a single service right so it should be in such a way so high cohesion is necessary in microservices architecture so why is this high cohesion necessary because they help in scalability and availability when you need it at a time right so they they help very much coming to the next point single source of truth what is the point of this there should be only one source to get the complete information like if you want to get the information about the product management so you should have a id like product id so if you have the product id you ask the product management to give the information about particular product you should get all the information same is applicable for the order management with order id account management with account id right so no duplicate information should be there about the product management in the database of the order management if they need it they have to call the product management so this helps in avoiding the duplicity of the information like single source of the truth with one service these are the few design principles that we just discussed they are going to help a lot when you are architecting the uh, real time application right so that i have explained with the few components of uh, online shopping portal even if it is a, a migrating existing uh, existing monolithic application into a microservices architecture or uh, like, uh, designing uh, or thinking in microservices from the application that you are uh, developing from scratch they are going to help a lot so what is the next that we are going to uh, discuss what is next we are going to see design patterns so design principles are about the like concepts like the high level overview that you should uh, keep in mind when designing design patterns are more uh, uh, near to the solving problems in microservices architecture right so the, there are many things to consider in microservices architect architecture under design patterns i'm going to group things and then it will be easy to discuss each things individually so everything i am going to explain in the design patterns so this is it about this video don't forget to put your thoughts in the comment section and please share this video as much as you can and this is all the set of topics that are coming under microservices architecture and this is the youtube channel all the playlist curated for you only so next topic is about the design principles see you there till then take care bye bye